Okay, I was asked to make a video on graduating pharmacist hourly pay uh, from 2019-2020. Obviously, we are just having graduated uh, students, so we're going to uh, talk about this and kind of how to do some math. Uh, so there are three basic categories. You're either employed, whether in your community or hospital or long-term care. This just goes on and on. You're in a residency or fellowship. Uh, which is probably PGY1, and we're just talking about your first year out of school. And then we have still seeking. And schools use many different words for this. They're still seeking the person to find out what they're doing, and they're still seeking a job. Uh, some use the word unemployed, uh, but I'll show you what mathematically I'll use to kind of make it not terrible, but not uh, too high as well. So first of all, if you do want to get uh, more information about pharmacist jobs uh, that are kind of out of the box, uh, you can get this on Kindle Unlimited. If you've already got it, you can just pick it up for free. And then uh, audiobooks, sometimes if you uh, have never been on Audible or you've never been on Amazon with an audiobook, you can get it free as well. Uh, so salary resources, a lot of... Uh, websites like to use these as the way to say what a pharmacist makes but we're gonna focus on what a pharmacist gets makes right now as they graduate so this says the average pharmacist salary is 13, 113,000 and I've even seen a website a school website that posted clinical pharmacists you know making 120 130 and things like that but the real number is this number and then you have to subtract because you're entry level 10%. So I don't know, I'm just doing it off the top of my head, 113.002 times uh, 0.9 is probably going to be like 101, 300 or something like that. Uh, so you're closer to 101. And that's what the data show, the, the five schools that we have when we're looking at those uh, you know, starter salaries. They're really right, right around 100, 101,000 on average. Uh, Forbes puts us at the number four highest paying job. I think that was last year at 127,120. So that's 6111 per hour. And then Bureau of Labor Statistics puts us at 126,120, 6064 per hour. So I'm going to show you how what you really want to plan for, especially if you have student loans, maybe you're in pharmacy school or you're just graduating. Uh, what can you expect uh, depending on what you're going to end up as and what are your chances of ending up there? So let's just start with what the salaries are. We're going to use these numbers because it's just a lot easier and you'll see how the math works. But I'm going to say that if you're employed as a new graduate, you're going to make $100,000. Uh, you're working as an entry level hospital pharmacist or you're uh, working at uh, retail. And again, this takes into account a 40 hour work week, which is not necessarily the case. Uh, many are hiring at 32 hours, but just for because the data show from the schools that did publish this data that it's around 100,000, I'll just leave it there. Residency fellowship, uh, this is actually closer to 45,000 for the residency, 55,000 for the fellowship, let's just split the difference. Uh, although most are gonna do residency, so it's actually closer to the lower end, but again, we're just trying to do easy math. And then still seeking, well, we don't wanna give them a zero to say that they don't make any money because they probably had a part-time job and they're working it full-time while they're waiting uh, to find something or waiting to get licensed. Uh, but since employed at 100,000 is about 48 an hour, 50,000 is 24 an hour and 25,000 is 12 an hour, let's just make give them a base salary of 25,000. Uh, if they're still looking, just kinda of working uh, some hours. Okay? So let's translate that again, 48 an hour, 24 an hour. That is, again, a little bit deceptive in that if you are a manager or if you are a salaried resident, you probably don't expect overtime pay. I think residents uh, are expected to do around 50 hours a week and then managers, um, it just really depends on where you're at, but a little more than 40, certainly. And then if you're 12 an hour, you're gonna get overtime if you work later. Okay, so we're going to use the Potomac School of Pharmacy. I grew up next to the Potomac River, and it's just a word that I like. But it's a fictional school of pharmacy, so I won't get sued by somebody. 
so we're going to say, and this is what the data show uh, right now, that about 25% of students are going to be employed right out of the gate uh, in a community or hospital or a long-term care position. These are salaries, these are surveys that are being done while they're in school. And the advantage of that survey is that it gets all of the students. Uh, the disadvantage of the survey is that usually people get jobs three months out, six months out, nine months out. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, so we're going to give 25 students this $48 an hour. So that means that every hour this group of 25 students makes $1,200. Residency fellowship, we're going to say that half of the graduating class, and although this is uh, really only at those schools that are uh, prioritizing residency that are getting residencies at a very high rate I'm talking 70 80 percent uh, and there are a number of them and it's there's privates that do this and there's publics that do this but we're gonna say that 50 students have residency fellowship but the other thing that this does is it it keeps those people that maybe had jobs like maybe they were a police officer or a teacher or something like that and they were going to make 50 grand anyway and they can just go back to their job until something in pharmacy opens up so we'll give them 24 dollars an hour uh, for 50 hours again this group also makes 1200 dollars uh, per hour of 50 people and now you've got your group of people that are still looking but we're saying that they're working uh, probably 40 hours a week although they're probably working less and making a little more but let's say that they take home around 12 bucks an hour on average uh, we'll put 25 of those students so every hour they are making six hundred dollars the actual data for still seeking and it's just so limited it's it's I can't really feel it's fair to use it but is 27 percent 28 percent 31 32 and that 32 has an asterisk because it's actually uh, a 43 percent but they said that they had like 11 percent looking or had like a negotiation or something uh, and 48 so of these five graduating pharmacy classes uh, before they were graduating just before they were graduating uh, these 27 28 31 32 and 48 percent didn't uh, have an employment offer at the time uh, so that averages to 33.2 and that's fuzzy math you can't really do that what you would really do is take give a 27 for each of the people and actually use the actual numbers but we're not even going to use the 33.2 I just set it at 25 percent uh, that are still seeking uh, because I think some of those would be getting jobs as they go uh, and then I didn't include zeros and negatives. So if you are paying for grad school as you graduate from pharmacy school and not making a salary, your payment for grad school may be more than you make uh, and you're taking on more loans or you may have a zero you're actually not working or something like that. So I didn't take those into account, just letting you know. But you're going to see why mathematically I did this. So we're going to add the employed plus the residency plus the still seeking. So 1,200 plus 1,200 plus 600. So that group of 100 graduates in their first year out of pharmacy school is making $3,000 per hour divided by 100. That's a mistake. This should be 100. And you get $30 an hour. So on average, a graduating Potomac School of Pharmacy student will earn $30 an hour average or 62400 in their first year. Now, why do I do some fuzzy math or crazy math like that? Well, because I think it's important that if you have student loans that you budget for a reasonable expectation. But this is the thing that the Potomac School of Pharmacy is fictional and the numbers are fictional. But uh, the data is clear that people are making about 100 if they graduate. Um, and take that job and they make about 45 or 50 if they get residency and they're probably making about 12 bucks an hour if they're working at you know in the retail or something like that uh, because there is a caveat that you if you get licensed in some states you lose your intern license so then you would have to take the technician um, technician exam and many places don't allow pharmacists to work as techs so it's kind of a conundrum that hopefully they will work through but where in the world do you find your numbers well i made a website that i'm using actually for something completely different but you can find them here if they have them 
Uh, so it's memorizingfarm.com forward slash match rates. And I've put them in order. So the last time, for example, these five schools are the leaders, Rutgers, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Washington State. They have published employment data for 2019. So you can put in the numbers from your school and figure out about what you would average if you're like a P3 or you're up as a P4 and so forth. Um, the last update in 2018, I think even as far as 2018, that's kind of a little bit off because the numbers are significantly changing uh, as we're moving from 28 to 2019 in terms of employment, but you can plug those numbers in and see. Uh, and then unfortunately, um, you were, if you're in one of the, I think it's 90 schools that don't publish employment data on their website, you would have to actually go to the assessment office or uh, the provost, I think, is the one that has that data uh, and ask them, hey, you know, what does, where are our numbers? I don't see them on the website. It might be an internal website. It might be somewhere else. But you can do the math for yourself. And the reason you want to do this is because if you've just taken out 160,000 in loans, which is the average or more, uh, you definitely want to know what you're going to make and you want to start working on, I hate to say it, a budget. And the budget doesn't have to be long. It's just, okay, well, I'm going to divide 63,000. Let's just make it 60,000 by 12. Okay. And that makes 5,000 a month. So if I'm my student loans and it gives you a nice little number when you go to the student loan thing is 2,000 a month, I have 3,000 a month left. So that's something you really want to take into account. Now you may know you're in residency, so that number has to go down. Uh, you know, you're making, um, let's do it as a, an order that, that we can. So let's do 48,000. So you're making 4,000 a month and you're paying 2,000 a month in loans or you're deferring your loans and so forth. So it gets complicated, but here are where you can find them, uh, memorizingfarm.com forward slash match rates. You can find the employment data if they post it on their website. And then if you want and me to make you a video about a question that you have, you can contact me at aagara at dmac.edu or a lot of people like to use Tony Farm D1. I do answer my messenger, but I may not accept your friend request if you're like new to Facebook or I don't know you that well, um, but I will look at uh, messages and so forth. All right, hope this was helpful.